Income tax 2023-2024. Expenses you cannot deduct, net profit or loss, and operating losses, NOLs. Get ready and some coffee, because tax preparation is like a choose-your-own-adventure novel. Every choice leading to more pages of paperwork. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our Accounting Rocks product line. If you're not crunching cords using Excel, you're doing it wrong. A must-have product because the fact, as everyone knows, of accounting being one of the highest forms of artistic expression means accountants have a requirement, the obligation, a duty to share the tools necessary to properly channel the creative muse. And the muse, she rarely speaks more clearly than through the beautiful symmetry of spreadsheets. So get the shirt, because the creative muse she could use a new pair of shoes. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Most of this information can be found in publication 946, how to depreciate property, section 179, deduction, special depreciation allowance, makers, listed property, and more, tax year 2023, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. Remember in the first half of the income tax formula, basically a funny income statement. Most income statements have an income minus expenses resulting in net income. Here having income minus various deductions resulting in taxable income. The sole proprietorship schedule C rolling into line one income of the formula. Noting the schedule C itself basically an income statement as we will see shortly having business income minus business expenses which you could call business deductions resulting in in essence net business income rolling in from the schedule c to line one income of the income tax formula this formula outlining the calculation on the form 1040 of which we see the first page here the schedule c ultimately rolling into line eight Additional income from Schedule 1. This is the Schedule 1. Additional income and adjustments to income. Part 1. Additional income. Schedule C. Rolling into line 3. Business income or loss. And this is the Schedule C. Profit or loss from business. Having that income statement structure we're so used to. That's going to be the income minus the expenses. The expenses could be thought of as the uh, business deductions also having the largest category of items within it. However, normally we would expect on an income statement, the expenses dollar amount to be lower than the income dollar amount. In other words, we expect to see more classes or categories of expenses than we expect to see categories of income. However, we're hoping the dollar amount of the income is larger than the expenses. That doesn't necessarily have to be the case though. What if the expenses are larger than the income? Then we end up with a loss situation. Now remember, this is an income tax system. The government is trying to make money. That means that basically they're on your side when, the, when you're making money. Or in other words, they're gonna act like they're on your side. They're your silent partner when you're making money and they want their piece of the profits. But if you lose money, they, they might just disassociate from you. We don't know this guy, we're, this loser. We're not, we don't wanna deal with him. They don't wanna pay you, in other words, for losing money. So if you get into a situation where you have a loss, then the question is, what is gonna happen with that? Can I take that loss against other income, such as W-2 income? Because possibly I have my Schedule C business and I also have other income from like W-2 or investments and whatnot. Can I take the loss against those other items? That's where the IRS is gonna be skeptical because they would like to most likely limit that kind of thing. So, but however, it is possible you can do that, but there could be restrictions as we saw with the home office deduction, for example, might have limitations in terms of how far that can take you on below or into uh, negative territory. 
and the deductibility limits of things like uh, a net operating loss. And if we cannot take a deduction in the current period because the IRS says no, because possibly there's a loss, the question is, can I then apply that loss to some other area, such as going backwards in time or possibly going currently into the future in time, possibly allowing me to deduct it against future income. So that's some of the things we'll touch on here. So expenses you cannot deduct. You usually cannot deduct the following as business expenses. So remember that the general idea is you have to have expenses that are ordinary and necessary to the generation of profit of the business. Some of those ordinary and necessary things are pretty common throughout most businesses that we can come up with general categories. Some of them will be unique to a particular business, such as as we saw with the film photographer. If you travel around the world taking pictures of things, then film is probably going to be an expense where it would not be an expense typically for an accountant, for example. Some things might be ordinary and necessary expenses, but they're not allowed as deductions, such as possibly bribes and kickbacks. Because in the United States, we have a tradition, of course, of not allowing or doing bribes and kickbacks, although things happen. In other countries, it's quite likely that bribes and kickbacks are like the, the order of business. That's how things are done, possibly, uh, in some areas. But of course, the idea is, is that the bribes and kickbacks are, you know, the, are illegal. And so you would think that the IRS doesn't want to incentivize those types of things and therefore not having them as, you know, deductible items. We want transparency here for crying out loud. Charitable contributions. Now note that charitable contributions for the Schedule C, usually if you have a Schedule C type of business and you want to give to charity, you would do so on the, on the individual side of things, in which case you might get a deduction on the Schedule A. Although I get the Schedule A is an itemized deduction, so you would only be able to deduct on the Schedule A if your itemized deductions are greater than uh, the standard deduction. But the general idea would be that you would take the draw off, you would make the money with your Schedule C business, possibly take the money out of the Schedule C business and then pay as a draw so it's not an expense and then pay for the charitable contributions possibly getting a deduction on the schedule a in that case if they allowed you to expense charitable contributions from the business side of things it seems kind of unfair to other w-2 reporting people because they don't have the capacity to take the deduction if they are taking the standard deduction right and, and if you were able to have the Schedule C and, and able to deduct the charitable contributions, that seems like it wouldn't match up to W-2 employees that don't have that benefit if, if they want to give to charity. And obviously giving to charity also is not an ordinary and necessary business expense. Because remember, the general idea here from a tax purposes standpoint is that those deductions that seem deduct that seem that like we should allow them are those that were ordinary and necessary, the ones that we needed in order to generate revenue. Charitable contributions generally are not, although you can argue that they are because they help with my appearance and whatnot, and, and in which case you would think it wouldn't be a contribution, it would be more like advertising, right? So then, so if it was advertising, you might be able to deduct it, but if it's just a charitable contribution, you would think possibly not on the Schedule C, possibly on uh, the Schedule A. All right demolition expenses uh demolition expenses or losses somewhat of an unusual situation there dues uh to business social athletic uh luncheon sporting airline and hotel clubs luncheon clubs luncheon is that even a word i didn't know that was even a thing but in any case obviously these are basically social type of groups now this kind of crosses the line remember that the idea here is that we want expenses that are ordinary and necessary for the business. So you can make the argument that, hey, look, I get to a lot of my clients from going to, to the gym or, or to the luncheon clubs or to the sporting clubs or, or, the, or whatever. But uh, it looks to the IRS, of course, is going to say, hey, look, that looks like it's a lot of a personal kind of thing. You're hanging out at the luncheon club or whatever. Uh, that looks like it's meals and entertainment to an IRS officer and so on. So you could see why there could be, you know, limitations to those types of dues as to be deductible because they look like they could be personal. 
So uh, entertainment expenses, similarly here, we always have this issue with like the meals and the entertainment, right? What's the deductibility of them? Because oftentimes those two things seem to coincide in some cases, meals, drink, and entertainment, right? That's how often go together. So, so then of course the IRS is once again gonna be skeptical as to whether something is a deductible, ordinary and necessary expense, or you're just trying to write off basically uh, entertainment. Again, you can argue that, well, the entertainment is where I pull the clients in. That's how I, that's how I woo people with my, with my skills at the, at the luncheon table or something. But again, you can see how the IRS would be skeptical of that as they're hanging out in the IRS office doing tax audits. So improvements to real or tangible personal property. Improvements are amounts paid for betterment to your property, restoration of your property, or work that adopts your property to a new or different use. So you might say, hey, wait a sec, I can't deduct improvements to the property. Well, the, the idea here is that you can't expense them upfront because you would have to put them on the books as an asset, as we talked about when we looked at the depreciable property. In other words, the question would be for an improvement, like the classic example of putting a, a repair to the roof on your office building versus putting a whole new roof on the office building. Repairing the roof, maybe you can deduct as a business expense if you deducted it as part of your home office or as your office building. But if you repaired the roof, then you might have to put it on the books as an asset. You still get the benefit, but not as an expense when you paid for it, but rather as an improvement, which you have to capitalize over the useful life of the property. So uh, uh, lobbying expenses. So obviously the tax code, we have some issues and some problems with large companies. We're always worried in the United States that the large companies are gonna get too influential where we end up with crony capitalism that being where the, the businesses are, are having so much influence on the politicians that the politicians are just basically doing the bidding of the businesses. And so we want to try to not have that be the case so that the businesses, so we want the, the law to set the rules that are fair for a capitalistic economy. And then people, the businesses play by those rules and have a fair competition, which leads to the lowest prices and the most efficient economy leading to the largest GDP growth that we can get to. Obviously, if the government starts weighing in on one half or another, you get from capitalism to crony capitalism, which is a short step away from, you know, too much centralization, communism, socialism, whatever you want to call it. And that becomes inefficient. So meaning the GDP of the country will go down because now people are choosing winners from the top down based on things other than performance. So so we want to try to not encourage lobbying by having it you know, as a deductible item. Penalties and fines you pay to a government agency or instrumentality because you broke the law. So obviously one of these might be for the taxes. You paid late on the taxes. Well, if you, if you don't pay on time for the taxes, the IRS is gonna hit you with their sticks, not literally the metaphorical sticks, boom, boom, two sticks, penalties, interest over the head to the gut. And then you, and then you go, ah, and then you try to deduct those expenses. At least I can get a deduction. Well, maybe for the interest, but not for the penalties because they don't want you to be deducting the penalties because they're supposed to hurt. That's why they hit you over the head with the stick. It's supposed to hurt. So personal uh, living and family expenses. So obviously personal stuff, you can't deduct on the business side. That's been one of the problems that we keep looking at, such as entertainment and whatnot, where the concern is that it's actually a personal expense and same with the clubs and country clubs or whatever. It looks like a personal expense you're trying to deduct on the business side. And so you can't do that. Political contributions. So once again, we're trying to keep the politics out we're having a difficult time of it these days. We always have a difficult time of it. It's a difficult thing to deal with, but we want to get that crony capitalism out of there because that's that's just leading the way to commie socialist utopian nightmare. Utopian u nightmare. Anyway, settlements and payments related uh, to sexual harassment or sexual abuse, if such settlements or payment is subject to a non-disclosure agreement. Oh no, let's not get into non-disclosure agreements and the current the current issues these days. But so well so not deductible. So you also cannot deduct 
attorney fees related to such settlements or payment. And if you do pay the attorney, make sure you write the correct memo on the check that you pay to the attorney or someone might sue you or so. I don't know what's going on. Anyways, sorry, that's figure net profit or loss. So after figuring your business income and expenses, you are ready to figure the net profit or loss uh, or net loss from your business. So you've done the difficult part at this point in time. The income is usually pretty easy to record. The expenses oftentimes are difficult because we have to get this information from the client that usually comes in a form of an income statement, put it into the books, make adjustments for those items that we need to make a tax adjustment for, such as the automobile, possibly depreciation at the least. And then uh, we can, once we have the, the tying out of the income and expenses, we can subtract the two <laughs> and then we can calculate the difference on the bottom line of the income statement. So you do this by subtracting business expenses from business income. So if your expenses are less than your income, the difference is net profit and becomes part of your income on line three of schedule one form 1040. So if you have more income than expenses, then it should be easy. You're gonna pay some taxes on it. The IRS is happy, they're, they're, si they're your silent partner and they want their cut of it but if there's a loss if your expenses are more than your income the difference is a net loss you can usually deduct it from gross income on line three of schedule one form 1040 so now we can still most likely take the loss on the schedule one the question of course is do i have other income to take the loss against if i have schedule c income and w2 income then I might have some capacity to take that loss against uh, W-2 income. But remember, we've talked about in the past some areas where the losses could be restricted, some deductions possibly being restricted, such as we saw possibly with the home office if you're in a loss situation. But in some situation, your loss is limited. This chapter briefly explains three of those situations. Other situations that may limit your loss are explained in the instructions for Schedule C, Line G, and Line 32. So you can see the IRS is basically would like to say, you loser, I don't want to be associated with you. And then they, they don't want to be involved when you lose money. They, they don't want to pay you for losing money. They want to take some of the money when you earn money. But you can often take the loss against other income and but then we get into these exceptions and circumstances all right so caution so if you have more than one business you must figure your net profit or loss uh, for each business on separate schedule c so in other words if you have multiple businesses that are unrelated to each other you could have more than one schedule c on your form 1040. excess business loss limitation so your loss from a trade or business may be limited. Use form 461 to determine the amount of your uh, excess loss, if any. So your excess business loss will be included as income on line 8P of Schedule 1, Form 1040, and treated as an NOL, net operating loss that is, that you must carry forward and deduct in a subsequent year. So in other words, if they do disallow the loss, whenever there's a disallowance of a legitimate expense right now we're saying if for example as we saw with the home office expenses when it would carry us into a loss they limited the amount of deduction that we could take but those are legitimate expenses you would think and so you would think then that they have to give you the loss in some way possibly taking it in future periods carrying it forward same with a, a net operating loss if i had legitimate business expenses that were greater than my income, then those expenses are legitimate expenses. If you don't wanna give me a tax benefit for them now in this current period, then you would think I should get a benefit later. And the reason that makes sense is because most businesses are gonna go through some years of losses and some years that they have sub substantially more income. It's gonna hopefully even out over time. Usually that curve looks like losses in the first one to five years, and then they're gonna have income so those expenses that created losses in those first few years were necessary to create the business that hopefully kept growing now it might not keep growing you might have losses and then that's it the business dies which happens all the time too but if you have a successful business it often starts off with losses in the first few years i mean that's i've seen that in multiple business in multiple times of course and 
that's a normal normal thing so you would think those legitimate businesses should be de- matched up against legitimate income which you would think would happen if you can roll the loss forward so it's like okay iris if you don't want to allow me to take the loss this year when i had it as a deduction you would think it's still it would be fair then for me to take advantage of those legitimate expenses against income when my business starts to be successful and that still gives the benefit to the to the irs of saying if my if i'm a loser and my business goes under and there's no shame in a business going under i'm just joking but if my business goes under then i will not have possibly the income to match up the rollover of the loss too right uh but but if i have income then i should be able to match it out against my income later because those losses were necessary to get legitimate income okay so for more information about the excess business loss limitation you can see form 461 and its instructions net operating losses in ols if your deductions for the year are more than your income for the year you may have an nol net operating loss you can use an nol by deducting it from your income in another year or years examples of typical losses that may produce an nol include but are not limited to losses incurred from the following your trader business of course that's what we're looking at the schedule c a casualty or theft resulting from a federally declared disaster so that's something a little bit outside of our scope here but similar concept here with the loss moving expenses rental property so we might talk about rental property more in a future presentation basically a schedule c similarities but with rental property which might have passive income limitations which could also complicate the loss situation all right a loss from operating a business is the most common uh, reason for an nol that being the schedule c format of the loss so for details about nols you can see publication 536 it explains how to figure an nol when uh, to use it how to claim an nol deduction and how to figure an nol carryover net profit uh, not for profit activities so if you do not carry on your business to make a profit there is a limit on the deduction uh, you can take you cannot use a loss from the activity to offset other income activities you do as a hobby or mainly for sport or recreation come under this limit so in other words we talked about this when we talked about whether or not we report something on a schedule c or not in a prior uh, course or section and the idea would be you have to be in business for uh, a profit what the irs is worried about is people basically having hobbies that they're charging as a legitimate business income uh, and then they end up with losses and they get to take those losses against other other income so and and that should be the the idea would be that would not be fair now this would be proven oftentimes the irs would say would would look at it and possibly think it would be reasonable if a new business had a loss for like the first three years because that's somewhat common but if you have losses for more than three years the irs might start to take the position of hey it looks like you're doing something that's kind of like a hobby and you're gonna have to prove to us that you're doing it in a for-profit situation so and also just note that if you have schedule c businesses and you had profit then it's a really a, a big hit to you because then you're paying the federal income taxes and the self-employment taxes social security and medicare whereas if it was a hobby then you would only be paying the federal income taxes not social security and medicare but if you have losses on the schedule c business then obviously you're not paying any federal income tax or social security and medicare and you might be getting a tax benefit by taking the loss against other income which which again the irs would be you can imagine would be skeptical of so the bottom line is that if you have a legitimate business even if it has losses don't you you want to be able to take those losses and report it as schedule c business but you want to make sure that in the event of an audit especially if you had losses extending beyond like three years you can prove to the irs that hey look this is a legitimate business that i'm seeking you know profits within uh, uh, legitimately all right 
So for details about not-for-profit activities, you can see hobby or business. Here's, here's what to know about that side, uh, that side hustle.